Hi, I'm Jack Buffington for RobotBrigade.com. This is another video in my series of videos about analog electronics, and you can find the master index right here. In this video, I'm going to talk about finding voltages and currents in resistive circuits. But before I get started with that, I want to address one thing that I didn't talk about in a previous video that might be of a bit of confusion for you. If I have some nebulous circuit here, and I have positive power supplies and grounds throughout the circuit. Maybe I even have one in here. Unless they're otherwise indicated, these are all connected together. Uh, you know, if they're all the same value. So 5 volt, 5 volt, 5 volt. All these would be connected together like this. And then this would be coming kind of like that. They're all connected together unless it's otherwise specified. And the reason is, reason that schematics are drawn like that is because there are often many places that you need a positive supply or a ground, and to draw all those wires would become a real mess. So uh, just keep that in mind when you're looking at schematics. All right, let's visit the uh, resistive voltage divider that I talked about in a previous video and I'm going to show you a shortcut to find the actual voltage. So let's say we have a voltage divider and you have 10 volts here and this is 7 ohms and this is 3 ohms. Now before what I did was I found my total resistance then I found my current through it and then I can find the voltage dropped by each resistor. In this one, I'm going to show you a quicker way. So if I want to find the voltage uh, from ground to this point right here, what I can do is I take the total resistance up to that point, so that's 3 ohms, divided by the total resistance of the whole chain. So that's 7 plus 3 is 10 then I multiply that by the voltage. The okay, and uh, what we get here is the tens cancel out and we're left with three volts. So there's three volts right there. Let's look at a different one. Let's say instead of 10 volts I have five volts and we have actually three resistors this time. And this is two ohms, this is three ohms, and that's five ohms. All right, what is the voltage right here? So the process is I take the voltage from ground, or the resistance from ground to the point I'm looking at, and that goes on the top of the uh, fraction and then I take the total resistance. So we have 2, 3, that's 5, plus 5 is 10, and that simplifies into 1 fifth, and then I times, I multiply that by the total voltage. So 5 there, volts, and so 1 fifth times 5 volts equals 1 volt. So right here I have 1 volt. For the voltage at this point right here, I need to take, I do the exact same thing. I take the resistance from ground to this point. So in this case, it's 5 ohms, all divided by the total resistance, so that's 10 ohms, times the voltage. And this is a half times 5, so that's 2.5 volts. Now, let's say you got, uh, actually, I'll leave this here for a second. Let's say you got your formula wrong. Maybe you just said 3 ohms over the total resistance, so that's 10, times 5. So if we multiply that out, that's 15 tenths equals 1 and a half. What we've got here is the voltage dropped by just this resistor. 
So between this point and this point, I have 1.5 volts. All right, let's look at a resistive circuit, and I can show you how to find the voltage and current at any given point in that circuit. So let's say I have a circuit like this. Three volts here, coming up to resistor like that, another one like that, one like that, this is one ohm, this is one ohm, actually I'll draw this down here, this is two ohms, and then I have a one ohm, and a one ohm over here, so one, one. That looks a little bit more like a resistor. All right, so for this circuit, my goal is first I have to simplify it so that it is just a loop. So first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to take these and these two simplified become two ohms. If I draw it like this, Okay, and then now I can see that these two are in parallel. So what I'm going to do is I uh, use my little rule of thumb. If I have two resistors that are in parallel and the same uh, value, then I just divide that value in half. And that is my new resistance. So here we go. So now I have three ohms around the circuit and three volts, and you remember Ohm's law, V equals IR. If I take my resistance and pop it down to there, V over R equals I. So my total resistance is three, and my total voltage is one, or three. So my current is one. Okay, so that means that I have, going around this simplified circuit, I have one amp flowing through it. Now, from this original circuit, the two resistors that are unchanged are these two. So I know I have one amp. Oops, I'm slightly off screen there. Sorry, guys. And one amp going through there. Now, you can think of current kind of like water. It'll take every path that it can possibly take. And so you don't have a full amp going through here or through here. It's split amongst them. So uh, let's look at this circuit here. If I have one amp flowing through a one ohm resistor, that means that I have a voltage drop here of one volt. And uh, see why I picked these simple numbers? Makes uh, standing up here and talking much easier. Likewise, if I have one amp going through a one ohm resistor here, I also have one volt dropped. So I've subtracted a volt from the three volts here and another volt here, so that leaves us across here one volt. And that applies to this circuit too because we, we still have a volt dropped here and a volt dropped here. So from this point right there to that point, we have one volt. So now we know the voltage across this resistor because between here and here it's one volt. So we know that one volt's going through here or not going through. There's a one volt difference between the different leg ends of the uh, resistor. So using Ohm's law again we have one volt equals now my current is currently unknown, so I, which is unknown, times 2 ohms. Okay, so 1 volt divided by 2 ohms equals 1 half amp. So we know that we have 1 half amp going through there. And since we have one amp going into this node right here and one half going down there, then there must be one half of an amp going through here. 
And if I have one half amp going through a one ohm resistor, that means that a half a volt is dropped from this point to this point. And likewise, if I have a half an amp going through that one, I know that from this point to this point, it is one half volt. So now we know everything there is to know about that circuit. Let's take a look at one more circuit, and I'm going to introduce a new type of power source here. Let's say I have a circuit like this. Now I have a thing called a current source. My previous one, if I drew it like this, you know, and I have something, two volts, that's a voltage source. So no matter what, between this point and this point, I have two volts. For this one, no matter what, between this point and this point, I have one amp flowing through there, no matter what. All right, so let's take a look at this. This circuit has something like this. Okay, so right now we have one amp flowing into this resistor right here. And using Ohm's law, we can figure out what the voltage is between this point and this point because we know that one amp is flowing here. And basically, this resistor is helping us figure it out. So, one amp times my resistor, which is one. So, that means that I have one volt between here and here. Okay, so I can figure out my current from here because I know that there's one volt right there. So my current down this way will be V equals I R. I know my voltage. That's one volt. Now I'm going to mark that. One, nope, I'm going off the screen again. Sorry, guys. One volt. All right, so one volt equals unknown current times two ohms. So through this resistor right here, we have one half amp. All right, now to figure out, uh, actually we can figure out some more stuff here. We don't have to simplify this. We also know that from this point right there, that's also one volt. And we know that because all that's across here is a wire. And no voltage in a schematic, no voltage drops through a wire. In the real world, voltage does drop through a wire, but very small amount, usually. Uh, Anyway, we know that this is one volt right here as well. So from here to here, we can figure out our current. So one volt equals an unknown current times four ohms. So one divided by four equals one fourth. Uh, so going down through here, I have one quarter amp. So we've used up a half amp here and a quarter amp here. So I know now that going through these resistors, I have a quarter amp left. All right. So let's figure out the voltage across here. Again, we're just going to pull out Ohm's law. And so uh, if I find the voltage equals 0.25 times 2. So that equals 0.5 volts.
crossed here. So there you go. There's a few resistive circuits that I showed voltage sources and I showed current sources and how to find uh, the voltages and currents in simple resistive circuits. This won't work for all resistive circuits, but I will show how to do more of that in a later video about nodal and mesh uh, networks. So hopefully you found this video worth watching. And if you did, check out my other videos. And thanks for watching. Yeah.